wildlings, welcome. I am here with some more than human friends to talk about a really cool and important human thing today, which is your ankles. This is also a request from Zoe on foot and ankle strengthening. So I have some flows that will follow this in sequences to work through ankle strengthening and to put it into practice. Right now, I just want to tell you a little bit about some really cool things about your ankle. Hopefully in a second you'll see why I chose to do this outside with some more than human friends so that you can see a little bit of how our ankles are very well evolved to move us through this outdoor world. So bear with me even though I know the sound quality isn't the best. Alright, so let's talk about your ankles. Your ankles have seven degrees of directions of movement, which is quite a bit of freedom for a joint. So they can plantar flex, this sort of ballerina point, and you can remember it by plantar flexion, point. You can dorsiflex your foot, which is the big thing I want to talk about today, by pulling your toes towards your tibia, towards your shin. You can turn your ankle inwards, meaning that you're pronating your ankle, uh, which is also called eversion. So if I were going to do that, I would roll my ankles in. And a thing to note here um, is what happens to my knees when I do that. So I'll talk about that in a second. So if I bring my ankles back, you can see that my knees tend to follow. So if I try to hold my knees in, I get less range of motion with that pronation, that eversion, that rolling in. And then I can also supinate my feet, turning them out, which is also called inversion. And you can see that my knees did something different. More likely than not, your knees will do something different than my knees because you live in your body, not mine. So you can supinate the ankles, rolling them out, that inversion. You can also turn your ankle out, and you notice that the rest of my leg likes to follow along. So if I work on restricting this and turn my ankle out. You can see that external rotation, that lateral rotation. And then same thing, I can either, most people try to turn their whole leg, and what they're really trying to do is isolate that one movement that is um, a medial rotation, internal rotation. And then the last part about your ankles is that you can roll them around in these big circles called circumduction. Cool, right? So our ankles move a ton. And one of the ones that I want to talk about today is dorsiflexion. Again, that's that action of pulling your toes towards your shin. So it's a really important degree of freedom to give your shin to move past your ankle. That's really important for a lot of stuff. There's going to be some of you who are listening to this or watching this that have been told that your knee should not go past your ankles. And I want to show you something with that. So imagine that this is a stair or a rock friend. Hello. And then step on it and then try to step up. More likely than not, you're going to have to take your knee past your ankle to be able to do that to generate enough force to give you the thrust to lift up. So what you can start to see is that when I take my knee past my ankle, can you see how that's decreasing the joint angle here? It's making it smaller, so these two things are coming closer together as I push off. So not an illegal move to let your knee go past your ankle. It's actually really important to have that dorsiflexion to be able to do that. In addition to walking up a flight of stairs or stepping up on a rock, you would need it for something like melasana. So people who don't have a lot of dorsiflexion they'll usually need to boost their heels up, and that's why it's totally okay to boost your heels up in a squat like this, for standing balance poses. So if I'm balancing, you know, let's say I'm in tree pose and balancing, you can see that I can get better balance than if I'm just trying to rigidly stay still. If I let a little bit of mobility come in, that's gonna help keep my balance there, mobility and balance very closely related. And Spoiler alert, they're also really good for pistol squats, so stay tuned for another video on that. Dorsiflexion can be one of the most difficult uh, directions of movement for our ankle because we tend to lose it for a number of different reasons. As we age, we tend to lose it simply because we're not using it a whole lot. 
And one way you might hear in somebody walking around, you might be able to hear that they have something called foot drop, which is a lack of dorsiflexion, if they kind of slip slap their feet around. So I don't know if you've ever done this or you've ever kind of see, you would hear it probably more than you would see it. But this sort of slapping or scraping sound as you're walking, that is from this thing called foot drop, a lack of dorsiflexion. So we tend to lose it as we age. Um, several injuries can be involved with that. If you have an anterior tilt at your pelvis, so that is when your hip points roll forward and they get this uh, arch in your back, which is not an illegal movement. Movement is always neutral. Bodies are not. I hope you can see this, that when I stand with an anterior tilt, it sends my weight forward. And as I do to compensate, I'm gonna give a little lift of my ankles. You might give that a try right now. So if you can, stand up and then put your feet wherever they're gonna go. And now just start to arch your back and notice where does the weight in your body go and how do you have to catch yourself? So if you started to go forward a little bit and you had to pick up your heels, what's happening there is that shifting the weight forward is gonna ask you to plantar flex to increase this joint angle, decrease this one in order to compensate for the shift in your weight. In addition to that, two of the most likely reasons that we might have a lack of dorsiflexion have to do with our human nature and how we put our world together these days. So lack of walking on uneven ground is a big culprit. This is why I wanted to be outside for this. As I walk around all of these different friends, so I practice this quite a bit, so you know, this might be difficult for you, uh, you know, build up to it. But you can see that my ankles have to do lots of different ways of moving around in order to help me maintain my balance here. That's what they're built to do. That is what they have evolved to do is to walk around on uneven ground. And you know, if you start doing this barefoot walking, it really starts to help strengthen your ankles. So um, that is one way to get right away into a practice of better and improved balance and strength with your ankles. You, I can tell the difference between people who go outside and hike, say, versus people who tend to walk on very flat or rather even, so the incline or decline doesn't matter, but rather a very even surface because they'll walk fundamentally different. You'll see a big difference in the mobility of their ankles and the strategies that their ankles use to catch them. Uh, walking is sort of a controlled fall. The last culprit here for why we might have a loss of dorsiflexion is heels, which if you look at almost any shoe has some degree of elevation in the shoe. Any degree of elevation in the shoe is going to give us a slight or a dramatic plantar flexion. So if I put this shoe on, you can see that now I have to walk around on a slight tippy toe. And so any movement I'm getting through my ankle is never going to let me have really that full dorsiflexion unless I'm really concentrating on it. And you can see I want to strike my heel right about here rather than here if I'm getting that full dorsiflexion. And that just, it feels weird in heels. Wearing heels fun sometimes, but it, that's why I think a lot of people say that it can contribute to plantar fasciitis. Really any of these things could contribute to plantar fasciitis because of that consistent position of your joint in that plantar flexion without feeding your movement diet enough of dorsiflexion. When we strengthen our feet in all the different planes of motion, that strengthens everything else up the chain so that you have improved balance and more mobility strategies. What that's really great for is your knees especially. Your knees are accessory joints. I did not make up that term. What that means is that they rely on your ankles and your pelvis to help stabilize them. So my friend Ariel Foster, hi Ariel if you're watching, she loves to say that knee problems are usually an ankle or a pelvis problem. That's where she goes to look. 
The other thing is that it can, as you saw with that interior tilt, if we rebalance what our feet are doing, it's going to rebalance what our pelvis does, in theory. So stay tuned for some other videos. I'm going to give us some practices to do with it. As always, let me know if you have any questions, comments, things that come up for you, and I will see you next time. Thanks.